Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about some fraction word problems. Very quickly, we're going to talk about the four different operations, so adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. And we're going to talk about some different kinds of words that you may see that kind of clues you in on whether it's an adding problem or a subtracting problem or a multiplication problem or a division problem. So we're going to start first with adding and subtracting. So looking at the top part of my sheet right here, we are going to start in the adding box. So it is the pink box. Some of the words that you may see that help you to know whether it is adding or subtracting is sum, altogether, total, longer, or increased. Remember that when we are adding, that means that we are just getting bigger. Okay. Um, sum is obviously the answer. When you find the sum, you're finding the answer to an addition problem. Increased and longer in total all mean getting bigger. All together or together means grouping it together, so making one big group and adding it together. Subtracting, decrease, difference, less than, how much more than. Any of those things mean that we are getting smaller, so we are finding the difference. Um, we are subtracting. Looking into multiplying and dividing. So for multiplying, of times multiplied by product. Doubled means that you're timesing by two. Triple means that you're timesing by three. Anytime that we multiply, we are also getting bigger. So these are some words. The most important one that you guys need to remember is the word of. For division, it is split, quotient, put into, equal groups, or divided by. All of these things mean that we are dividing. It means that we are typically getting smaller whenever we divide. Um, whenever we divide fractions, remember that you must keep change change or keep change flip. Keep the first pr fraction the same, change the division sign to a multiplication sign, and then change the second fraction. You flip it so it is where the denominator is on top and the numerator is on the bottom. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold this sheet up on your computer. If you want to come back to this video at some point in time and screenshot this so that you will have this to study by, you're more than welcome to. So here are our list of words. And I'm sure you guys can come up with a ton more probably in your groups or even just at home or even Googling them because I Googled some of these too just to make absolutely sure. Um, the next thing that we're going to be talking about is a test taking strategy and it is called the cubes strategy. So we're going to be looking at this one together. This strategy is the acronym for cubes. So C-U-B-E-S. The C means to circle the numbers. So you're going to circle all of your numbers in your problems. The U is to underline the question. You're going to underline what that question is. The B is to box in the keywords. And these keywords are right here are going to be what words tell you about the operation. So there you're going to be trying to figure out what operation you're using. And that's where those words that I just showed you come in handy. That way you can know what operation that you're going to be doing in that problem. E, you're going to evaluate your steps and draw. So if it's a multi-step problem, do I need to multiply something first and then subtract? Do I need to divide and then add? What is it and how is it that I need to solve it? And last but not least, the S is solve and check. If you add something, you can subtract it in order to, or you can work backwards and you can subtract to make sure that you are correct. If you're multiplying, you can divide and vice versa for both of those. So the word problems that you're going to go through today and use, you're going to practice using this strategy, which is cubes. You're also going to get a bookmark that has this strategy on there, so that way you will have it with you to use. Um, throughout the rest of this year. Please make sure that you are going home, you're working on Study Island, you're going back and watching some of these videos. Okay, you're figuring out where it is that you're not so comfortable with, that way on June the, on June the 1st you will be successful on the EOG. Okay.
So your first question that you're going to be doing today reads, Jax listened to one half of a new CD. Maria listened to one fourth of what Jax listened to. What fraction of the CD did Maria listen to? So if I'm circling my important numbers, I'm going to be circling one half and I'm circling one fourth. I'm going to underline my question on that task card. My question is, what fraction of the CD did Maria listen to? And in that question right there, it tells you that your answer is going to be a fraction. It says, what fraction of the CD? So if you get a whole number, you did something wrong. Okay. Um, B, box in the keywords. Well, I'm going to go back and read it again. It says, Jax listened to one half of a new CD. Maria listened to one fourth of what Jax listened. Well, Jax listened to one half. So Maria listened to one half of one fourth. So I would need to box in that of, and I would probably box in what fraction of the CD because that's telling me right there that my answer is a fraction. So the problem that I'm going to be solving here is one half times one fourth. And I know that when I'm solving here, I know that I have to multiply my numerator straight across and then my denominator straight across. So one times one is one, two times four is eight. So therefore, is one eighth a fraction? Yes. So therefore, I can check it off and say yes, that I am correct. She listened to one eighth of the CD and you can label it if you want to of the CD okay you have 16 of these task cards to do today you have paper copies of number one through eight so you can go and use your cube strategy on there I would like to see those task cards I'm sure in ELA you guys have talked about marking up your text I want to see those task cards marked up you're using this strategy Okay, I've just done the first one with you. Feel free, make sure that it is marked up and your answer is on the recording sheet. Other than that, you guys may go ahead and start in your groups with the adult that you're working with and you may go through and answer each of those questions. Once you finish with number eight, the rest of them are on a Google Slides. You click on that Google Slides and go through and answer those on there. You should be able to get all 16 done in this class period. Have a great day.